Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to God's house today as we gather to worship and praise our Lord on this Reformation Sunday. Reformation Day is October 31st, the day that Martin Luther posted the 95 Theses. So we uh, choose that day um, um, to recognize the start of the Protestant Reformation, to commemorate the Reformation, the, the, the concept, the idea that God's truth of his word you know, was brought back out again uh, through his church to his people. Uh, through reformers like Martin Luther and others to discover the truth that God's uh, grace is free for us and we're saved by his grace alone uh, through our faith in Jesus Christ. And so we celebrate that today in our worship and recognize uh, again that truth of God's word uh, this day. So our order of service is printed out in our worship folder. We have a unique order today and it's also going to of course be up on the screen as well. Let's rise as we then begin our worship with our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. I confess before God and you that I am a miserable sinner, guilty of every sin, of unbelief, and of blasphemy. I also feel that God's word is not bringing forth fruit in me. I hear it, but I do not receive it earnestly. I do not show works of love toward my neighbor. I am full of anger, hate, and envy toward him. I am impatient, greedy, and bent on every evil. Therefore, my heart and conscience are heavy, and I would gladly be freed of my sins. I ask you to strengthen my little faith, and comfort my weak conscience by the divine word and promise. Why do you desire to receive forgiveness? Because I desire to strengthen my soul with God's word and to obtain grace. Then as you believe, so then let it be done unto you. And I, by the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain standing for our hymn of praise, verses 1 and 2 of hymn 566. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. 
Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. Our first reading for this Reformation Sunday is from Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. The Apostle John writes, Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead, with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Let's join in reading Psalm 46 responsibly. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though its waters roar and foam. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. Come behold the works of the Lord. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3, verses 9 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus." whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, 
and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us join together confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let's join now in explanation of this faith with uh, Luther's explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Please be seated as we join in singing the hymn of the day, A Mighty Fortress.
grace, mercy, and peace of God our Father be yours this day through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The meditation is based on the words of Psalm 46, which uh, we read together responsibly. Dear Christian friends, we just sang the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. This hymn is based on this psalm, Psalm 46. Uh, Luther's hymn has been a comfort to many Christians ever since it was written. It not only recognizes the real problems that we face because of the devil, you know, the world, and our own sinful flesh, but it also provides comfort and security to those who are in the fortress of Jesus' protection. Now, the hymn is a beautiful and, and comforting one because it reflects important truths that are found in the scriptures. You must remember the political and the religious climate of Luther's day. Now, neither the Roman Catholic Church nor the government would accept the teaching of the Reformers. In fact, both powers essentially persecuted Luther and his followers. You know, the world at that time was also filled with plagues and, and death. And the devil was rightly recognized as active in the everyday lives of people. Psalm 46 then recognizes all of these troubles and difficulties, while at the same time then reminding its readers that God is a mighty fortress, that the Lord of hosts is our refuge, and all who trust in him are safe. And so we can relate to the realities of the psalm and to Luther's hymn. And let's start where the psalm starts, with natural disasters. You know, natural disasters seem to be everywhere. In our area of the country, tornadoes are a big concern. You know, that's why we have an alert, a Lutheran early response team, here at our congregation to help then and assist in the aftermath of such natural disasters, such as tornadoes. You know, we had a tornado this year in Auburn on July 21st with damage to structures in the area and many downed limbs and trees. You know, many from our alert team went out in the community to help pick up tree limbs and to uh, clean up from the storm. And who can forget the destructive tornado that hit Taylorville back on December 1st, 2018, just less than two years ago, in a town 25 miles to our east. You know, other areas of the country get flooding hurricanes, earthquakes, forest fires, mudslides, even tsunamis. We know about the flooding along the Mississippi River that always seems to uh, come in the spring of the year uh, in Illinois. You know, this year's Atlantic hurricane season was predicted to be an active one, and it surpassed expectations. So far, we've had 26 named storms. I don't know if you've heard, but that's two storms shy of the record set in 2005. And we are a month ahead then of when the 26th storm was named that year. Some are predicting that we'll have as many as 30 storms uh, in the Atlantic then this year. With the last hurricane that went through, I saw a news segment from one town, I think it was uh, in Louisiana, and they were preparing for their fourth destructive weather system to come through that town uh, that year this summer and they were still waiting then for roofs to be repaired and for damage to be fixed from the previous one when that last hurricane you know was going to hit and the fears that natural disasters provoke then are the focus of the first section of the psalm in verses two and three and the psalm mentions many of those things that afflict our natural world you know the earth giving way the mountains falling into the seas the waters roaring and foaming, and the trembling of the earth. You know, it's easy for Christians to say that we will not fear. But doubt is an, an inevitable result then of the sin within each of us. Doubt causes us to fear then these destructive things that we see going on in our natural world. Even we Christians will not overcome the totality of fear in our lifetime because our sinful nature is still a part of us. However, in the psalm, God promises to be our refuge and strength. He is our very present help, as it says in verse 1. In the midst of these troubles, the psalm gives an alternate picture then. Peace for those who are in Jesus Christ. 
So while the world may be captivated by the troubles of natural disasters, you know, the nightly news covers every one of them, you know, the psalm pictures a calm river whose streams make glad the city of God. You know, the world is indeed corrupted and sinful, but such peace that is promised to the children of God. You see, our eyes should not focus on the things of death, but rather on the things of eternal life. All who are baptized into Jesus' death and resurrection shall see then what verse 4 describes as the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. You know, St. Paul is helpful then as he describes his contentment. We read as our epistle lesson two weeks ago in worship, uh, the, the words of Philippians chapter 4. And in verses 11 through 13, Paul wrote, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. You know, Paul can say this because he understands that even as he lives in the world, he also stands in the presence of God. For the holy place of God is wherever the word is proclaimed and the sacraments are rightly administered. In the church, then, we share these promises. The world around us is in chaos. However, once we enter into the presence of God, you know, who speaks to us then through his word and the sacraments, you know, peace and sanity are restored to us. In addition to the natural disasters we face in this fallen world, fallen humanity itself causes great anxiety and fear. You know, in fact, the attacks against us by other people cause us much more pain than natural disasters do. Nevertheless, God is also our refuge against then our worldly enemies. The psalm speaks of nations raging and kingdoms tottering. We don't have to go too far to find such examples in our time. Just watch the nightly news. Worldwide, there are wars and rumors of wars. You know, Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, all threaten peace in the world. Civil unrest is so common, and not only in countries that are far away, but also even in our own cities. You know, look at the rioting and looting that's been taking place in our nation this summer. You know, in my lifetime, I've never seen such wanton destruction and acts of violence. And to think that we have elected officials buying into this notion to defund the police in places like Minneapolis and Portland and, and others. You know, as peace-loving people, as people who want security in our lives, can you imagine a society where we have no armed police officers to protect and to serve? Now, I know people have various ideas of that, but some go so far as to want no police at all, and that truly is a scary thought. You know, not only that, how many murders, uh, abortions, sexual sins, you know, thefts, and, and acts of greed do we see in our culture? You know, I sent an email this past week that indicated that during the time which over 200,000 people then were dying of COVID in our nation, over 600,000 babies were dying of abortion. That's three times as many deaths by abortion as compared to COVID-19. Three times as many people in the womb willfully murdered. And where is our society then condemning abortion? Now, some do, but many are complicit and even celebrated. So we need to elect more pro-life presidents more pro-life members of Congress, more governors and mayors and city councilmen so that our laws of our land can be chained and all murder then can be declared illegal. You know, sin do does not understand itself to be sinful because it looks inward on its own desires. And sin seeks to remove anything that threatens these desires. You know, it's interesting that the militaries of the world have recognized that for humans to kill other humans, it's necessary to convince them that those whom they are killing are less than human. Now that is what sin does 
when it sets its own desires against God and his people. Well, not only are people, the nations, raging, they are doing so because the devil and his demons are real, and they remain active in the world, seeking to do evil and bring despair and death to God's creation. But again here, once more, God is our refuge against the powers of evil. The devil is constantly on the attack. And we see that today through secularism and spiritualism. The first seeks to remove God from the world. And the second seeks to provide false gods. You know, look at all the movements in recent years to remove God from anything to do with government or the public sector. You know, our country continues to fall away from God and into the devil's lies. Yet again, in the midst of the turmoil caused by the devil, you know, his demons and evil people, the psalmist redirects our gaze then to the proper place. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. You know, a mighty fortress is our God provides great insight then into Psalm 46. It reminds us that our God is a mighty fortress a trusty shield and weapon. God protects us as a shield, and through Jesus Christ is an offensive weapon to defeat sin, death, and the devil. There's nothing that can harm those who are in Christ Jesus. The world can torture and kill, but God has defeated the powers of sin, death, and the devil through the death and resurrection of his only Son. All the raging powers, including all the struggles and the pain that they cause, cannot stand against the crucifixion of Jesus, his resurrection, and our baptism that intimately then connects us with him. The Lord our God will put an end then to all evils in the world on the day when Jesus comes again. You know, the psalm assures us, he makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. You know, we live in a world of seeming chaos, where natural disasters affect hundreds of thousands. There are wars and rumors of wars, protests against civil order and violence, abortions and every kind of sin. You know, all the work of the devil. Yet in Psalm 46, we are reminded that no matter how chaotic things may seem, God stands above all things, and he promises us in a place of comfort and safety in the midst of evil. We find this safety in Jesus. Apart from Jesus, there's only death, fear, suffering, and the works of the devil. But in Jesus, we have a mighty fortress. You know, he is our comfort and our safe place until we close our eyes in this life and then ultimately are raised then to a never-ending joy as God's children. Thanks be to God then that he worked through the Reformation to bring such clarity back to his people. The clarity of the gospel of Jesus who removes the works of sin, death, and the devil. So we have no need to fear. For our God, our God of grace, is with us. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's rise as we take our petitions and requests to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, you have shown your faithfulness by raising up those in every generation who call your church to repentance and renewal. Continue to raise up voices in our own day who will herald the truth of your, of your word and, and proclaim them the faith in purity and truth against all enemies. Everlasting Father, you do not desire the death of the sinner, but want all to come to faith and life in Christ. Raise up faithful pastors who will preach your word without fail and teach the doctrine delivered to the saints that many may hear and believe. Merciful Lord, your word has been the light and salvation throughout the ages. Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom 
through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionaries serving far and near and the new congregations they establish in your name. God of power and might, you've established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant to Donald Trump, our president, Jay Pritzker, our governor, the Congress of these United States, and the legislature of our state, wisdom, humility, and integrity, that all may enjoy true justice and the protection of life from its conception to its natural end. Holy and gracious God, your power is revealed chiefly in showing mercy to those in need. Give to the sick healing, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and to the dying peace. According to your gracious promise, grant patience to those in tribulation and trial. Heavenly Father, you have given great gifts to your people and provide resources to provide for their own needs and for the poor. Bless the agencies and programs of your church by which your people give aid and support to those in need. Help us to provide gainful employment to all people, that they may enjoy the fruits of their labors, and honor you then with the works of their hands. Gracious God and Father, grant your rich blessing to those celebrating birthdays this week, including Noah Vaughn, Brian Deemer, Lisa Mao, Allie McGuire, Lori Disquay, Chantel Kay, Lee Woodell, Rosie Sanders, Rory Porter, Olivia Harmon, and John Adams. O faithful Lord, throughout the ages you spoke hope through the prophets until that day when you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior and Redeemer. Bless those who are just learning the gospel, and bless us with a desire to know and keep your word. Encourage your people to avail themselves of the grace of confession and absolution so that they may forgive one another and live in the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Almighty God and Father, we pray you to grant us all good things that will benefit us in body and soul, and to prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose, and in the freedom of you alone, supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, all these things, then we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, strengthen and preserve you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we join together in singing, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word.
you to take your bulletins home with all the uh, announcements in there, see what's going on this week. Just want to highlight a couple things. Uh, first is that tomorrow uh, tea time is meeting at 930. And then also on Saturday, we're going to be having then our trunk or treat starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, ask people, uh, participants to come about uh, uh, at least 10 minutes or 15 minutes ahead of time, get a parking space, try to park every other space, spread our cars out, try to do the social distance thing, and, and then uh, just bring some candy to pass out for those coming through and, and plan to have a, a fun evening. It's a wonderful opportunity that we can provide for our community since trick or tree might be a little different this year, but uh, we want a place for the people to come here uh, then again on the 31st uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. So pray then that you'll have a wonderful week this week as we uh, think of the Protestant Reformation, which is going to be on Saturday. But uh, uh, we think of the, the truth of God's word being brought back to light, uh, that we're saved by grace through faith, not of our works, right? Not something we have to do to get right with God, but to realize that he forgives us freely by his grace and that gives us then the freedom to do then good works, to please him and to uh, honor his commands and to live in love toward our neighbors. So pray God will strengthen you then for that this week and, and have a, a blessed week this week.